Welcome everybody to Go Local Live. I'm Josh Fenton, CEO and co-founder. Uh, before we go to Balzano, Italy, uh, please take a look at a story on Go Local. It's about the testing equipment developed by Abbott Technologies used at the CBS testing facility at Twin River. Uh, a major research hospital in New York uh, has found that that testing equipment is almost 50% of the time de uh, delivering incorrect results. Uh, that's an important factor to be able to understand what the spread is in Rhode Island if people are going out of that facility, been told that they have, don't have the coronavirus, but in fact do have the coronavirus, and that's a different issue. Uh, we had asked CVS about that in, on April 6th, the efficacy of that testing equipment. They deferred to Abbott Technologies at that time. They did not respond to our request. We've hit CVS again today. Uh, about whether they'll continue to use that equipment. We've also asked the governor's office as well. So stay tuned for follow-up as to how that will shake out. Uh, at 12 o'clock, we'll have Dr. Michael Fine. We're sure to ask him about that as well. And at 1 o'clock is Governor Raimondo, her press conference. And we'll probably head over there to ask her about that as well. So, But right now, let's go to Rebecca Cotto da Silva in Bolzano, Italy. Rebecca, thank you so much for your weekly check-in. Hey, thank you so much for having me. Uh, let's talk about a couple, excuse me, a couple of things. Uh, things are looking much better there in Italy. You're about three to four weeks ahead of us. Tell us what the situation is now. Right. So my region personally saw a week with um, no deaths and very, very few new infections, if any. I, I didn't actually check that statistic very carefully, but no deaths. Um, our region opened up again last Friday was pretty much when it was opening up because it was an immediate thing. So as soon as Penn hit the paper, so it was signed last Friday afternoon. And yeah, um, we a lot of places haven't actually opened that can and some have. But for example, a hairdresser can pretty much an individual hairdresser or two or three can pretty much get some filter masks and gloves, um, bleach and get going, whereas a restaurant might have to redo its whole floor plan. So our local pizzeria, for example, is going to be doing deliveries Friday, Saturday, Sunday, but did not open. It's usually open from Tuesday to Sunday. It did not open on Tuesday, which was very disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, your region has about 520,000 people, about almost exactly half the size of Rhode Island. Uh, no deaths in the past week in Rhode Island. I, I, I can't do the quick math of every day, but I'm going to guess between 90 and 100 deaths in the past seven days. So that's a good indication that if there's really strong restrictions over the long term, because you, you had been locked down for th almost three months, that you now are seeing the benefit of that and hopefully not seeing a surge later on. Yeah, that's right. I mean, we were locked down. We, it, it was pretty harsh first in those hot spots, and then they just pretty quickly expanded it to the whole country. And then, you know, there was still this debate, should people be allowed to go outside, walk and run? And then, you know, the deaths just kept mounting. No, nothing. No outdoor activity basically for... A year, uh, sorry, a month. It felt yeah. like a year. Um, but, yeah, I think I literally went four weeks between runs, and um, and so now we are seeing it. You are seeing that in Italy, it's going down. I think population density and the proximity of people to one another really does matter, because you just see like Lombardy was so problematic, and it's so packed there. You walk around Milan and it's like, you know, it's dense. It's not wide streets. This isn't Dallas, Texas, where you got to pave the boulevards in advance of the city, really. This is where footpaths and horse paths became people paths and car paths. And um, it's really hard to stay away from each other, especially last February, March. We didn't know to stay away from each other. So, um, so yeah, it's it's doing great here where there's much less population density and it's still doing well in the rest of the, uh, in the other bigger cities. Yeah, it looks like just looking at the numbers uh, before the show of week over week that the number of deaths across Italy has 
fallen dramatically in the United States. It's still averaging around 1,600 to 1,800 deaths on any given day, uh, sometimes a little spike higher. Um, so is, there's a lot of confidence growing in Italy? Yeah, you know, I think the big thing is just people are tired of lockdown and people want to get out. The summer is coming and August is so precious for Italians. Everyone goes to the beach in August. Business is shut. I, my first time in Italy, I lived here from January to August of 2016 and I lived in Turin, Torino. And you know, everything shut down in August, every little coffee shop. And I was just like, really? You <laughs> shut down for the month? I, like, this is just my little American head can't wrap myself around this. <laughs> I've and, been to Italy numerous times in August and it is shut down unless you are at the beach. Yes, yeah. And so th that's what people really, you know, people want to get back to that. There's lots of government programs going around now that babysitter bonus, a vacation bonus, a small business owner bonus. So they're really looking to now uh, work on fixing the economy or getting it back up or plugging the holes that have been left by these couple months. Um, we'll see what happens. I think that Italians are going to probably be able to take their vacations. I'm hopeful. I'm an optimist, but we'll see. Um, the edicts are now coming down that starting on June 3rd and moving forward, you'll be able to travel throughout the country. So you could head down to Sicily or go to Capri if you so choose. Uh, do you think Italians will take advantage of that or will they stay close to home? You know, theoretically that's possible. I think that a lot of the restrictions just are really awful. <laughs> like um, it's hot and wearing a mask in the heat is uncomfortable. And then train travel is a big thing here. And even if you're wearing masks, uh, like for me to get to Rome on a train, I think it's four and a half hours on the high speed. So I'd be four and a half hours minimum uh, sitting next to different people. Now they're blocking off every other seat or you know, they've got these seating plans um, and restaurants have seating plans. And it's one of those things where I think people want to be, know that they'll be able to enjoy themselves. Um, and people aren't necessarily looking forward to the plexiglass so there's, there's a sense, there are definitely people who are very, very fearful of the virus. And then there are people who are like, no, I, you know, if I'm going to live, I want to live. And I don't want to have plexiglass between me and the next seat. Um, and that's also a big deal for industry too. Like a lot of places, I, I mentioned this last week, I think say, no, we can't operate based on these new rules to keep customers as far apart. We don't have the space to stay profitable. So, yeah, it's uh, whether travel will take off. I think that um, we'll see when the school year officially ends in June, if people are kind of sick and want to go somewhere. I think a lot of people want to make up the money they lost. Um, there are people, hairdressers, <laughs> who were already booked in May before the shutdown, who now have all their March and April clients saying, wait, these guys get to go before me. <laughs> That's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> fights over who gets to go to the hairdresser. Um, yeah. tour tourism is a massive part of the Italian economy um, and, and Americans are a significant portion of that. Uh, I'm doubting m many Americans are going to be headed off to uh, Positano um, or, or Venice or Florence this summer. Uh, what's that mean for the Italian economy? Uh, it's awful. Um... Whether or not Italy and the EU can compensate for this in a viable way remains to be seen. I know I saw yesterday that there was this idea of green corridors and Italy said, no, no, <laughs> you do that and we're leaving the EU. <laughs> so, yeah, European sort of unity is really, it's tense right now um, because people are, sort of, ah, oh, no, Italy, you're, you're, you've got an infection rate that's too big for us to open the Austrian border. or, And so it's, it's hard um, when Europeans are saying, no, Austrians can't travel half an hour into Italy. Americans are going to be like, oh, okay, well, maybe I'll go to Innsbruck instead. Yeah, There's I don't some... know about, you know, much of America is still locked down in many ways. 
Uh, here yes. we're opening restaurants for outdoor seating only starting uh, Monday. And uh, there's yeah. a lot of concern by restaurateurs that it's not economically viable. The cost of the cleaning and the restrictions that there's just, there's just not gonna be enough, enough traffic to be able to monetize their companies anymore. Um, talk talk right. a little bit about education. Your daughter is now in the, in the final few weeks of her academic year. Is that continuing to go well? Yeah, it's going great. Um, it, it's funny, you see uh, kids treating this in different ways because we've had to go to the school to, for example, pick up all the materials that were left behind or pick up new printouts from the teachers. And uh, you've got people like my daughter who need to be written every minute. And then other kids, you know, other parents, probably they're telling the truth. Oh, yeah, my son is all on top of it. He's on the computer before I'm awake and da da da. And, you know, then you've got parents with multiple children in multiple different years, and it's, um, you know, they're doing their best. But uh, it's it's moving forward. It's, it's funny. They're not necessarily calling test tests, even though it's the exact same format. Um, it's uh, going over the stuff that they've done for the last month, and then they move on to another topic. They call it a grand review or, you know, some other word and not test. And it's funny to me because <laughs> she took one look at it and she said, this is a test. And I was like, that's what I said too, but it's called, you know, uh, like uh, review work. So if it looks like a test, smells like a test and quacks like a test, I believe it is a test. Um, exactly. <laughs> uh, sports, we've talked about it, I think, a few weeks ago. Uh, uh, soccer, football in Italy is, uh, you know, uh, king. And in the United States, uh, they're struggling to figure out a game plan to bring back baseball later on this summer. Is there any stated plan on how they're going to handle uh, the return of soccer? You know, I for, I haven't, I forgot to look at that. I heard that practice was starting again on Monday the 11th. Um, there's, from what I've seen, really still no willingness to let people touch each other that don't live in the same house. Um, other countries have worked with this idea of bubbles. Uh, I think New Zealand had the bubbles where you've got this number of people that aren't necessarily in your family, but you had contact with them just before. Um, so I believe that people have been able to start using facilities to start training again as of Monday. Um, but that training, it's a little bit of, uh, it's not completely real because you're doing things without touching and what's soccer without elbows? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, uh, Rebecca, you get the last word. What do Americans need to know about life in Italy today? I'd say just um, keep an eye on our numbers. We are, you know, we did well. We locked down. We're willing to wear masks. And um, let's see how the, the difference, I think, between the numbers that you saw in Italy in late March and all through April, and hopefully that we'll see different numbers now, will have to do with masks and floor plans and different sanitation rules. So if you can follow those rules, um, look at our numbers, look at the numbers of countries who have these in, in play and realize that you know, this is something that's going to help us uh, keep that curve as flat as possible while, while the doctors and scientists figure out the best way to uh, preserve most of the population from the worst consequences of the COVID-19. Rebecca Coto de Silva, thank you as always. Hopefully we'll have you back next Friday if your schedule allows. For everyone else, <laughs> Dr. Michael Fine at 12 noon, Governor Raimondo at 1 p.m. Thanks everybody and stay tuned for updates throughout the day. Thanks, stay safe.